Hello to everyone and welcome to today's webinar titled VCAD's Runtime Federation. I am Nicola Migliore, I am the Product Development Manager for the VCAD project at Belogic. And today I will be covering the presentation. So today we will be showing you what we have been calling multi-model support or runtime federation. It is the latest development for VCAD and will be available for VCAD for ACC users during the beginning of next year. And we then plan to extend support to standalone users soon after. The general idea is that you will be able to federate models together and load them in dynamically inside of your reports. As always, at the end of the presentation, we'll have a brief Q&A session. So if you have any questions during the presentation, simply drop them in the question panel and we'll get to them at the end. Last thing, please keep in mind that everything I'm showing you today is preview functionality. Substance will remain the same, but there might be some graphical changes and optimizations when we do the official release. With all of that out of the way, let's jump in and actually check out how we can create our federations. So for starters, I'm going to go to my file manager, loading data from my uh, VCAD for ACC project. So let's go ahead and check out my project folder. And we can see that inside of this folder, I have three different files. I have a, an architectural file, a structural file, and an MEP file. These are all files from BIM Collab, and they're all in IFC format. Usually, these files are federated inside of a Naviswork model. Whereas today, we're going to put them in together and we're going to be joining them in a dynamic federation. So check out one last thing. In this case, of our three files, two have been imported into VCAT, which means that the data for these models has been extracted and made and prepared in order to be used inside of our reports. Whereas for the architectural file, it hasn't been imported yet. Now, if we want to go ahead and create our federation, we can simply go to our multi-model actions. And here we have the window where we can actually create federations and set them up to be used in our reports. So let's start by defining a federation and we're gonna give it a name. And we can call this uh, webinar fed and we can give it a brief description. So this is the federation created during the uh, December 15th, uh, session. So I'm giving you a description that will help me further down the line to recognize the federation, remember what I made it for, and maybe even what's included. So for example, I could actually uh, add in a little note and say we're going to put the uh, the structural and the MEP models in here. Okay, so now I can save my federation. And already you can see that I've created my new federation I have my information over here and I've already been assigned a federation GUID. We're going to have a look in a moment uh, at why I need this GUID and it'll be very helpful in our report. Next up, for now we have uh, an empty federation. So we actually need to start adding um, models to my federation so that they can be rendered. So you can see here, I'm represented the various models that I had in my folder. When you're creating dynamic federations in VCAD, everything starts from a folder. So the, the folder is uh, the collector of the models that I'll then be able to federate. And you can see that my structural and my MEP actually have a, a little icon here signifying that the models have been imported into VCAD. So the dat data, the model data, which is the uh, list of assets, all the properties and so on, has been extracted and is ready to be used in a report. Whereas for the architectural one, it doesn't have that icon and I can't actually select it. So for now, I'm simply gonna go ahead and add my structural and my MEP model. Later on, we'll see how we can add the architectural one. So I've selected my models. I have to, of course, remember to save. So I can go ahead and save. And now my federation contains these two uh, models. So I can see here in the preview, I have a little information of the two. So I have the file names and I have the actual slot ID of each of the models. At this point, we're actually ready to create our report. So uh, we try to keep the, the functionality as close as possible to regular VCAD when you're creating reports for a single model. 
So again, here, we're gonna start from downloading a template. Uh, when you first start out, uh, of course, you'll have access as always to the templates that we've developed. So we've developed a, a template uh, specifically targeted for multi-model support. Uh, and we'll see what is included in that. But of course, later on the line, uh, you will be able to create your own custom templates uh, that can contain uh, additional data connections, additional uh, viewers, uh, and, and all the transformations that you may need inside of your report. For now, let's go with the standard report template and download it. And then we can go ahead and open it up. So everything is gonna work pretty similar to how the uh, uh, the re template reports that we're used to in VCAT does. So when we first open up the template, it's gonna do a refresh of the data sets and download all the information. The difference is in this case, we're gonna be downloading information on a federation level for that federation that I have defined. And then starting from there, we're gonna download the information for the specific models that are included in the federation. So we can have a look at what this template looks like. And the template is um, based also on the type of file that we use. So remember we're using ISC files. So the data sets you can see over here are reminiscent of the data sets that are included in the IFC data extraction. And I should mention, uh, we're using uh, version three of the VCAT data extraction for IFC files. So in other words, uh, the data extraction based on the uh, IFC uh, open shell data extraction. Okay, so as usual, we start out with a bit of a summary page that gives us some information of the data that is present in our model, the number of, of assets, the number of properties, and so on. Uh, we can move on to the first new thing of this template, uh, which is this info, this info tab over here, where we get some information about the specific models that are included. So I have two files that are being loaded in. And then of course, each one defines its own project and building. And so we can see we have the structural, we have the MEP, and here we have a bit of a, an overview of the number of properties. And we can see that uh, the MEP model actually has way more properties uh, than the structural one, which of course makes sense. And then finally, we can see here, we have our rendering of our model. It's already working, we didn't have to do anything. However, we can see that there seems to be a bit of an issue with the uh, with the uh, one of the two models. So everything is already loaded in, it's already connected to the data. So I can make selections in, in my report and have those selections be translated to the model. But I notice there seems to be a problem with the positioning of my MEP model over here. This is a bit of a big problem. And unfortunately, it's a problem that can happen very often, especially if you have models that are being prepared by different people or different suppliers, and you then need to federate them uh, centering everything isn't always uh, really straightforward, which is why we spent a lot of energy on making it as easy as possible to rectify these sort of problems in VCAT. So to fix this issue, let's head back to the file manager. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and save a copy of this report uh, just to make sure that should anything happen, uh, we're good to go. And we have our report, so we can call this uh, webinar session. Okay, so now we've saved the report and we don't have to uh, worry about it. Okay, now let's switch back to the file manager. So if you come over here, we're looking still at our uh, federation. And if, if we look at, well at the screen, we can see we have another tab here, it's called an alignment tab. So once I've selected my federation, I can head on over to the alignment. And here, I'll be able to play around with the positioning of the various models. So we have a bit of a preview. And again, we can see our MEP model is a little out of place right now. Uh, you can start by selecting the models and you can see when I select the model, it's highlighted. And I have several things I can do. I could either uh, drag it around or, or even move it more freely, or I can go with pinpoint precision and just give it the actual uh, positioning that I want. Now let's reset this one. Uh, because it looked like our structural model was, was well-oriented and we want to really change the MEP one. Being able to paste in values like this is actually very handy, especially if you're uh, copying transformations from one federation to another, or if you've already done alignment somewhere else uh, and you just want to carry it over.
So for now, let's have a look at our MEP model. So it looks like uh, the positioning may actually not be the, the main problem. Uh, it looks like it's incorrectly rotated. So let's reset this. Let's have a look at the rotation. Uh, so for the rotation, uh, we could go in and we could paste in a rotation and this will rotate along the Z axis. Uh, so I don't know, I could rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, it looks like I, I overshot it a bit. I could maybe reduce it to 45. And it could go on like this and, and slowly uh, but surely uh, realign me correctly. But we also have access to uh, other tools here. So let's reset that to zero. Let's actually rotate a little the model. And we can see that here, if I just position it well, I could actually play around with the measurement tools that uh, AutoS gives us. And I should mention the alignment here is being done thanks to the uh, Autodesk alignment services that we are leveraging to then keep this data, save it, and use it later on in our report. So now that I have my measuring tool out, I can actually go ahead and measure the angle. So for example, if we start from here and we get a general idea of where my angle is supposed to end up, so pretty much this, you can see here I have about 28 degree angle. So I can go ahead and I can paste this in and this can be a good starting point. So I paste in 28 degrees. And now if I look at my MEP model, it looks like it's a little over what I wanted. So uh, here it's a little farther than over to this edge. So I can try and reduce this a bit. So we're gonna go to 27. Uh, and let's actually close the measurement tool. That way we don't have distractions. Okay, so this is looking better. Probably, probably just a little more. Yes, 26 looks like exactly what I wanted. Or no, actually 26 is going slightly outside of the wall. So let's go back to 27. There we go. Okay, so this is what I want. So now I have aligned my two models. And of course here, uh, depending on, on the complexity of my case, I may end up spending quite a bit of time in the model alignment. And there's several different tools. I did a very easy way, but there's other functionality to move and to rotate everything. Um, we're keeping it simple right now. Uh, but just keep in mind that this may be something you want to uh, invest some more time in and you have the tools to do it. So now we've set up the, the rotation for our uh, MEP model. I want to, of course, save this uh, positioning. And what this save just did is it told VCAD, hey, you know the federation we're working with? This, uh, if we switch back, this webinar fed that we've defined, uh, I want to save some alignment information. And specifically for my MEP model, I want to save some alignment uh, information. So now that we've done this, all we really need to do to rectify our report is head on over back to the report. We can do that right now and simply refresh the data sets. Once I refresh the data sets, the report is going to re-download the information of my federation. And in that data set is included information of the alignment of my various models. And I'll show you in a moment where that is uh, located. But first, let's just force the viewer to reset by switching tabs real quick and allowing the, the report, uh, the models to be loaded in back again. And then the alignment information will be correctly loaded in. So we can see now my MEP model is exactly where I had positioned it uh, over in the file manager. Okay, so let's actually have a look at the data that we have available and I'll kind of explain a little how this template works because it's a, it's a little more uh, elaborate than our, our classic templates. So let's head on over to the transform data section. And here, oh, don't, don't worry about these warnings. Uh, this is simply the preview that needs to be refreshed, but all the data sets are actually correctly being loaded in. Uh, and these data sets, everything starts from this single data set called multi-model info data. Here, I have the information of my federation that I've defined. And specifically, if we go to the beginning of the transformation, we can see that everything starts from an API call to our uh, VCAD services. This is the development version of the VCAD services. And what we're doing is we're asking for the multi-model data and we're passing in this GUID over here, which if we have a look over at our file manager, is actually the same Federation GUID that we have over here. 
So like normally, uh, VCAD reports retrieve uh, model information by passing in the slot ID. If we're working with a federation, we need to pass in the federation ID, of course. Okay, so let's return to our report. Now, once uh, the information has been loaded, so I know uh, which files I'm loading, I actually know the actual slot of each file. And you can see here, I have the transformation information for the two models. So this is all that we really need in order to tell the VCAD viewer that it needs to reposition uh, the MEP model. And then if we go through the various transformations, we won't check out all of the steps, but you can see that here, we're then expanding uh, the selection and for every model, we're loading in the different data sets. Now, as I said, these are IFC files, so we're loading the data sets for our IFC data extraction. And so you can see for each model, I have the project, I have the site, the building, the story, and so on. And more importantly, I have the IFC asset table and I have the IFC asset property table, which as always are the two data sets that contain uh, most of the information uh, that, that is included in your model. And this goes for the MEP model and same goes for the uh, structural model. So you can see here we have the asset data set and the property data set. Then the actual asset uh, data set over here, the VCAT asset table, simply starts from the, um, from the multi-model data and then filters it down to just the asset data sets and then it explodes everything and you end up with one big data set that includes all of the data for both models. This is very important because we'll be able to manage data from all of our models in our federation as if they were all part of a single model with, of course, the information of the original file. So if we want to segregate the data based on the file, we can, but it's very easy to manage everything together. Okay, so we saw how we retrieved this information. So how do we pass it to the actual viewer? So we can go ahead and we can close and apply this right now. And if we go back to our report, I can show you how the, the, the viewer is then interpreting this information. So normally, uh, for the VCAD viewer to function, all you need to do is pass in the object ID over here, which is the reference to the specific geometry inside of the model. In a multi-model uh, case scenario, though, uh, it's not sufficient. I can't only know the ID of the object, I also need to know which model it's coming from. So that is why you need to also pass in the model GUID. And you can find this information pretty much in all of the data sets, but the more intuitive way to, to retrieve it is through the asset table. So here in the BCAT asset table, I have this GUID. This is the GUID of the federation. And I can pass it in, and this will allow VCAT to know that every time I select an object, uh, not only what object it is, but what model it refers to. Finally, we can pass in here over to the model alignment data, uh, that alignment information that I showed you earlier. This allows us to position the model correctly with the new transformations. There's also an option to pass in model view, which will be used in the case of uh, Revit files when you can choose the, the, the view that you want to be rendered. For now, we're not gonna look at that scenario. We're concentrating on IFC. So the nice thing of, of passing in this information is it, it's super simple. And if we actually remove this real quick uh, and force the view to refresh, uh, you can see that the model now uh, correctly loads in the data. It knows the geometries it's supposed to show. It knows which model the geometries are connected to. So you can see here we loaded two out of two. And if we go ahead and we select one model or the other, you can see that it, they are loaded correctly. However, we don't have the transformation information for my uh, MEP model. To make that work, all I need to do is simply pass in that alignment data over to my model alignment. Force the, force the viewer to refresh, and the MEP model will be correctly positioned. Okay, so as you can see, everything is correctly rotated and positioned. Okay, so let's have a look. Uh, I showed you a bit of, on the data side. Let's have a look on the rest of the report. Uh, it's fairly similar to our other reports, so I'll go a little fast, but there may be people who aren't uh, very familiar uh, with VCAD reports, so we can go ahead and check them out. So first off, we have recreation of the uh, asset detail page uh, where we can see 
the detail of every single object in our model, uh, models actually, because it's two. And specifically, uh, of course, the data is connected to, to my uh, rendering. So if I make a selection in the data, I can not only focus in on the specific properties or attributes of that specific element, but I can see it selected in my in my model. They're kind of tiny. It's a little hard to see them, but you can see that they're being uh, highlighted in my model. And the other thing I'd like to show you is that not only am I highlighting the object in the model and hiding the rest, I'm actually hiding entirely the models that do not include elements of my selection. So what is happening is when I start out, I have two models loaded in, the structural and the MEP, and then based on my selection, uh, only the models that include items from my selection will be uh, loaded in, uh, will be rendered, whereas the other ones will be completely hidden. Now, I can't show you a good example of this uh, with the MEP and the, uh, and the structural because they don't really have much of an overlap in the way of entities. Uh, but I'll be able to show you a good example later when we add the uh, architectural model. So for now, let's just uh, move on. I just wanted to point out this functionality. So next up, we have the asset colors, where, of course, we're able to define uh, categorizations of colors and apply those colors to our model dynamically. Uh, like we do normally uh, with with our regular uh, PCAD reports. Uh, then we have the asset markers, uh, which of course are one of the latest features added to, to PCAD, which allow us to render icons inside of our models. And again, in this case, it'll be based on the selection. So if we select a specific um, type, of, type of, uh, of item, we can see here we have the markers being loaded in for those. And if we include items from both models and both models are loaded in rather than only one. Then because we're talking of IFC models, we have the quantities in material report page, uh, which gives you an overview of the materials uh, from the objects of both models. And of course, the, the, the volumes and the quantities of each. Again, there's not a lot of overlap in uh, between the structural and the MEP, but there will be later with the architectural one. And finally, here we have the asset tree where we can see sort of that IFC data structure, uh, how it's loaded in internally. So we have the, the site, the building, uh, and then the, the various floors and everything that is contained in the various floors, just like we'd normally find in an IFC file. Okay, so I, I talked a little about uh, how things could change if we add the architectural model. Let's actually go ahead and, and see, once we have the report, how we can change the federation, how we can play with the federation even after the report has been created. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this again. And what I could actually do is I could publish it, I could maybe send it to my colleague, and I could still go and alter my federation later on when maybe I get more data in. So let's go to the file manager. And as I said here, we cannot actually select the architectural model because it hasn't been imported. So what we want to do is we want to go ahead and import this file. Uh, we could do it here, or uh, I'll just take this opportunity to remind you, you have multi-model, uh, multi-file actions. So here you could actually select multiple models and queue them up uh, for, for, for import. Uh, in this case, it doesn't make a lot of difference because we're just doing one, but when you're starting out your federation, you usually want to import more than one model at once. So this can be a good tool to use in that case. Um, so now the model is, is getting ready to be uh, imported. Oh, before I forget, just a quick reminder. Um, if uh, you have any questions uh, during the presentation uh, on, uh, on all the, the multi-model features that I'm showing, but also on the uh, more classic uh, VCAT functionality, please go ahead and, and drop it in that question panel. Uh, my colleague Francesco will answer immediately any questions that um, can be easily answered uh, right on the spot through a message. Otherwise, we'll get to them at the very end. And if we don't have time to cover all of them during the session, we'll gladly reach out to you later in an email or on social media to answer your question. Okay, so the architectural model has been imported, which means all of the data has been extracted and is available to be used in a report. So now we can actually go ahead and add it to our federation. 
So if we come here and we select our federation that we created earlier, you can see that now uh, we're, we're indicated that we've selected two out of the three files that are available. So I can go ahead and I can add the architectural one. Of course, I need to save the, the update to the federation. And now that it has been added, let's try and have a look at the alignment. So over here, we can check out the alignment uh, of this new model that we've added. And it looks like it's uh, looks like it's already correctly centered. Yeah, so it's looking good. Looks like everything has been positioned correctly. Uh, actually, actually, let's do this. Um, let's go ahead and let's separate these models. And, and I'll show you in a moment uh, how this can be useful. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's maybe drag out uh, the architectural one and the MEP. Just a little more. Okay, so we've updated the position of more than one model. That looks even enough. Uh, we can go ahead and save. So now we've added a model and we've updated its position all at once. We can return to our report and we can go ahead and we can refresh the report. So again, we're downloading the information for the federation. So what models are included, the alignment information, and then for each one of those models, we're loading in the extracted data. Okay, now if we force a, a refresh on the viewer, we can see here we have three files and no longer one, the architectural, the structural, and the MEP. And of course, once the, the, the models are loaded in, we can see how uh, all three of them have been loaded in, one next to the other. So we're already using that new alignment information. Okay, so there's another bit of information I need to show, share with you, and that's uh, mainly some of the options. So we checked out the uh, We've checked out the bindings that we can do with the viewer, uh, with the new version of the viewer. I should show you also the options. And to do that, why don't we go ahead and let's duplicate this asset page, because I want to set up a bit of a scenario and I'll show you uh, what I mean. So let's just clear this out. Let's call this asset uh, overview. Okay, and I'll show you a bit how the viewer works on, on a more granular, basis. So I have my three models. Now if I make selections in my mod in my data sets, you can see, as I said before, only the model containing the information in the selection is loaded. So here I'm going kind of random on an object by object basis. If we wanted something a little more uh, clear, we can actually come here and we could say, okay, load in the, the um, architectural and the structural together. And you see every time I make a selection down here, we're loading in or unloading the models. Only the models that contain assets from our selection and unloading the models that do not, which is very good and it gives us a lot of flexibility. However, it means that we're making a lot of calls every time uh, we make a selection. And depending on the use case, we may not want that to happen. And I'll show you in a moment how we can fix that. So if we come over to the um, options of our custom visual over to the formatting options. Here you'll see we have two, no, two new options in the load options. So number one is enable multi-model, which of course sets up the multi-model. So it's basically telling VCAD, uh, hey, you're supposed to load in multiple models. So remember to use the data bindings, model GUID and potentially model view and model alignment in order to load in this data. So that's fairly intuitive. The other one is the multi-model startup filter. This is a very powerful option that allows us to say, hey, when you start up the viewer, load in the models, all the models based on the selection and only those. And for the rest of the, of the time, just keep those models. So just don't, don't unload and reload every time. So I'll show you what that looks like. It'll make it a little more clear. So right now we made a selection and we're looking at the structural and the MEP model. Let's go ahead and switch this on. And now let's change tabs real quick and load back in. Now, when we load back in, we already have that selection made. So we already are loading only the uh, 
uh, architectural and the MEP. And so the viewer, when it starts, it knows it's supposed to keep only those models loaded in. So you can see it loaded two out of two. It's loading two out of two. So it's only loading the models uh, related to the selections that I've made. There we go. And now, no matter what selection I make, you'll see I'm not loading in models again. So no matter how many objects I load, if I reload both of them at the same time, you can see there's no more loading going on, which is way more, uh, is, is way faster. It caused a little, it potentially causes a little more time at the beginning because you need to load all the models that you're interested in. But once you have them, you no longer need to worry about uh, loading and unloading on every selection. So a good, a good example here would be instead of the, instead of filtering the file, let's just keep all the files. Now let's say that I'm only interested in uh, reviewing the beams, which is something that I know will be in common between uh, both the structural and the architectural. Now let's switch tabs again. That way we force the viewer to reload again. And when it reloads, it'll check the selection. It will only load in the models compatible with the selection that has been made. So I'm expecting two models and I'm expecting the structural and the architectural. Here we go. And so now that I have these two in, I can sort of play and I can go through the, the various assets and check them out and no further loading is necessary. However, if I now try to add the MEP model or I remove the filter here, which would include the MEP model, you'll see that it isn't loaded in anymore. So I have all of my other objects, uh, but I don't have the MEP model because it wasn't loaded in the original load. So this sort of depends on uh, your workflow, the kind of report you're trying to make, uh, but in some cases, it's very helpful. And I'll actually show you a little bit of a more advanced use in Power BI where this can come in very handy. So imagine that we had a report uh, and here we actually have models divided based on their um, on their discipline. So we have architectural, structural, and MEP. But you can imagine that, especially if you have a very large model, what you could do is you could divide it into quadrants or segments, and you could then want to load in dynamically only parts of the model, allowing you to manage a very large model on a smaller scale. So you could keep your huge model but only load in the parts that you actually need. So let's imagine that instead of being three different dis disciplines, these are just three different areas of my construction. And I want to be able to manage them. So what I could do is I could set up a filter page. So let's create a new tab. We're gonna call this filter. And we're gonna do something very simple. We're gonna simply create a filter page here that will then allow me to navigate to my actual report page. So to do that, I'm gonna drop in a slicer. Uh, and I'm actually going to first come here to the overview and I'm going to remove all of these because we're not going to be needing them anymore. We're going to be doing our filtering beforehand. So I can go ahead and remove these. I can actually make a little more room for my viewer. Now, if I go back to my filter page here, I can drop in a slicer. Uh, let's actually make the background a little darker. That way I can see things more clearly. There we go. Here I can drag in my uh, entity. So let's say I want to filter my objects based on the entity. Can we get rid of the scroll bar? There we go. Okay. And let's also remove, uh, I'm not interested in the blank values. There we go. That way we gain a little more room to play around with. Okay. <clears throat> So I have this filter and let's also add a filter based on the file name. So I want to be filtering based on the file name. So I can drag and drop another slicer. And here I can find the file name always from my assets table. So over here, file name. Again, let's remove the blanks. There we go. Uh, this is gonna be kind of ugly. We're just looking for functionality right now, kind of going. Uh, as fast as possible. So here I have my other file, uh, my other uh, filter, and let's add in some cards that can give me the information of how many objects I should be expecting on the other side. Uh, so here we can add a card, make this a little smaller, 
and count the number of objects, for example. So I can drag in the object ID. Now I want to count and I want to rename this to number of assets, for example. And let's also duplicate this down here. And instead of the number of assets, let's check out the number of uh, properties. So we can pull from the VCAT asset properties table and just count the number of values. So not the first one, but count and rename it. Number of properties. There we go. Okay, so with no selection made, I have 3,000 um, assets and over 100,000 properties. If I make selections uh, here, of course, those number those numbers reduce drastically. Okay, so I've made these slices, slicers. Now I need to uh, make sure that they're filtering my other pages. So to do that, I can select my slicer and I can go over to the view page and show my slicers panel. Uh, and let's just simply go ahead and sync this with all pages. Um, now what happens is uh, this slicer has been added to all my pages. I don't care about the other ones. Let's just focus on the asset overview. Uh, so we can see it added it over the report, but what we can actually do is we can hide it. That way the slicer is present in the page. It will still work, uh, but it won't be visible. And let's do the same thing for the file name. So add to all the pages and then let's just hide it in the overview when we don't care about the rest. Okay, now what we can start doing is, for example, if I select uh, this file, so I just want to check out the structural file. I have 292 assets. And now if I go over to the overview, because I've set up that startup filter that we were looking at before, let's actually remove these panels. You see I loaded one file out of one, and I'm just looking at my structural file. This is incredibly useful. Uh, if we want to complete it and make our report look a little better, uh, what we could actually do is we can go ahead and we can insert a very simple button, something like this over here, maybe make it a little bigger. Uh, just minor, minor, minor uh, styling. There we go. And on our button, uh, what we want to do is we want to have an action that will allow us to navigate, uh, page navigation, to our asset overview. So now when I finish my report and I publish it, of course, this could look way better, but uh, we have limited time. My report user can start up in this filter page. So this can be the, the start of the report and they can make their selection, say, okay, I want to check out the IFC beam and the IFC columns uh, for both of my, my models. And again, imagine that these aren't different disciplines, they're simply different sectors of the same construction. Uh, I'm expecting 175 uh, assets. So now I can navigate to that report page. And when my report page loads in, uh, I'll see Two out of two models, you can see down here, are being loaded in, and 175 objects are available. So these are the original objects. Uh, let's go into X-ray mode. And then from here, my end user can use the report like they normally would uh, and have very good performance because the models have been loaded in the first time and they don't need to worry about loading and unloading every time. Again, it depends on the on the uh, scenario in which you're trying to build, but this is definitely something to keep in mind. Okay, so I've showed you uh, how to create a federation. I've showed you how to update the federation and how to create your reports. Uh, last thing I should show you is um, something to keep an eye out for when you're when you're creating federations. So let's head on back to the to my report. Uh, I'm sorry, to my file manager. And now I've added all three models to my federation. Now, something I need to keep in mind is if th that federation is connected to these three slots, so it has the information 
of the VCAD slot ID for each one. And that's how it's loading into models. This means that if I go ahead and I clear out a slot, so I remove this model, and I then go back to my federation management, select my existing federation. Now I have an alert, which is telling me, hey, we can find a file. And if I come here, it indicates out of the files that, that I have in my federation, the architectural one isn't available anymore. This means that my reports won't function correctly because they won't be able to load in the data for this model. So what I need to do is I need to go ahead and I need to remove this slot from my existing federation. And then if I go and I import the model again, I can add it back in. This is something that you need to keep in mind. Once you've created a federation, the federation is linked to those slot instances. So if you clear them out, you may have issues that you need to be uh, checking out. Okay. I think this covers uh, most of the, uh, the functionality and the things that we need to keep in mind. Um, I think it's better if we hop over to questions, that way uh, we, we can cover everything. Uh, again, if we don't manage to get to every single question, uh, we'll definitely, we'll definitely uh, contact you later with those. So let me just pull up the question panel and let's see what questions we got. Okay, so uh, number one, what file formats are supported for uh, multi-model? Okay, so uh, as of right now, we have support for IFC files, of course, like we just saw, and for um, and for a Navis work files as well. Uh, these are the two formats we gave priority to. One, the IFCs, because they don't have a good federation solution, especially if you have large uh, models and now it's work because we found that very large um, models can only be managed in Navis work and sometimes not even then. So the idea is kind of like what I was showing you before that you'll be able to create these huge Navis work models, split them into smaller sections and then load them in dynamically and therefore great, get a great performance boost. Uh, so these are the two that we have ready. Uh, we're then going to be adding support for Revit file. And we're even working on a more generalized data extraction that would allow us to manage um, mixed federations. So you could have an IFC model federated with a Revit model and so on. Okay, um, next up. Is there a limit to the number of models I can use in a federation? Uh, no, there is no physical limit to the number of models that you can use in your federation. Uh, of course, you need to be able to uh, extract the data from those models. So I guess there's a, a slot limit. And the other thing to keep in mind is uh, performance again. So if you're loading 50 models all in together, then that may be something you need to look at. But part of the beauty of this is that you'll get to choose how and when you load into models. So you can set up your federations however you prefer. Uh, does, uh, does it also work with 2D formats and 2D Revit uh, views? Uh, so as of right now, uh, no, especially the, the alignment. Uh, well, okay, the alignment. Uh, the alignment feature I showed you has some issues with uh, 2D formats. So as of right now, it's not available. Um, the, the actual federation should work. Uh, when will multi-model be available in VCAT standalone? Uh, is there a date? So as I mentioned, uh, we're releasing support for uh, runtime federation to all VCAT for ACC users during the beginning of next year. And right after that, we're going straight into adding support for standalone users. So fortunately, I do not have a date for you right now, but I can tell you shortly after. Uh, once, once it's been released for uh, ACC users. Uh, next question. Can I make uh, federations using files from different folders? Uh, no. So as I, as I hinted at before, we're using the folder as a sort of a, a unit of measurement and as a collector uh, because we need something to anchor to when we're starting to create our federations. 
So the idea is if you want to federate multiple mod uh, different models, uh, you can drop them all in into a folder and ACC or BIM 360 make it very simple to uh, copy versions of the models or, or put models in into different folders. So that shouldn't be an issue. And that is the starting place for then creating your actual federation. Uh, next up, uh, what happens if I update one of the models I use in the multi uh, multi model report? Okay, so uh, the nice thing of how we we went about implementing this feature is that we actually uh, don't require you to use the same model every time because the data is loaded in from the federation, starting from the federation and not from the single models when you create the report. The nice thing is you can go ahead and you can update the, the model all you like. The VCAD identifier remains the same. So the VCAD slot ID remains the same even when you update the model. Uh, and that is what the Federation knows. So ideally what you can do is you can go ahead and you can create revisions of your model. You can keep the slot up to date with the latest versions. And your federation will always be up to date with the latest version. All you need to do is give it a quick refresh so it loads in the latest uh, extracted data. So if we try to keep it as simple as possible and um, as uh, sustainable as possible. So no problem for historical project or ongoing projects, you're good to go. I'm afraid that ends the time. Uh, I think there's another couple questions I, we can't get to right now. Uh, we'll definitely uh, reach out to you uh, 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 through through email. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for for jumping in and joining us today and having a look at, at what we're developing. Uh, a, a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears went into this, and so we're really happy to to be able to share this with you guys. All right, thank you. Uh, and everyone, have a nice rest of your day.